Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking peptides. Now, for those of you that have been with the channel some time, you'll know some of my favorite set of ingredients to incorporate in my routine are peptides. They have so many different benefits. They plump out the skin for that instant youthfulness that I think we all secretly crave. They minimize the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles by, in the long term, boosting collagen and elastin production. They can smooth out our complexion, and they just hydrate us to the gods. I believe that there's a peptide serum out there for just about everyone, but they've been given a little bit of a reputation, unfairly in my opinion, of being difficult to incorporate in an existing skincare routine. This just isn't the case, so in this video I want to share with you five common peptide mistakes, misconceptions, which could be holding you back, reaching for that peptide serum and getting all the amazing benefits it can bring. Sit back, relax, let's talk some mistakes with peptides. Now, before we get into this video, I would love to know your own experiences with peptides. Give me like your peptide before and after stories and sound off in the comment section below. Whatever your experience has been with peptides, hopefully if you're like me, you like the channel and want to support me and get this message out there loud and clear, you'll reach down and give this video a thumbs up and a like. There's this little thing called the YouTube algorithm that whirs on in the background. The more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform. So I'm always so, so grateful to each and every one of you that just takes that small moment out of your day to like the content I create here on the channel. Now I want to keep this short, sharp and to the point, so should we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in? If you'd like to know a little bit more about peptides, how they work, some of my favourite peptide serums, I covered this in a recent video which I'm going to leave a link to up there, but today is all about dispelling those myths and rumours when it comes to this wonderful suite of ingredients. So mistake number one is assuming that all peptides are created equal. They're absolutely not. Like all of us, they're individuals. There are different types of peptides out there that perform different benefits in the skin. This can all get a little bit overwhelming. You end up reading up so, so much online to kind of work out what peptide best fits your individual skin concern and the results that you want to get. This for me is all just a little bit confusing and kind of zaps some of the enjoyment out of my skincare routine. So I actually reach for peptide products that have multiple different peptides held within them. This is actually easier than you think because most brands now understand that not all peptides are the same and you need different ones to harness different benefits. They'll actually put two, three or in some cases more peptides within each of their formulations. I'm going to link a video to some of my favourite peptide containing serums which I'll link up there. There. All of those have multiple different peptides held within them, so don't panic. Don't scour the net for your perfect match when it comes to a peptide. Enjoy the benefits of multiple different ones in your skincare routine, and that way, I think you'll really see the difference. The second mistake is panicking over using your peptides with vitamin C. This is, I'd say this is the number one most frequently asked question I get here on the channel. That is, can I use this peptide with vitamin C? Or how do I layer this when you can't use peptides with vitamin C? Actually, this is a total misconception. And it all dates back to a study that was done some time ago that showed if you take a peptide and you apply some heat, pressure and a low pH environment, it kind of breaks it apart, denatures it and renders it less effective. So people then kind of carried that forward and said, right, you absolutely shouldn't use your peptides in a low pH environment. The problem is that was very selective. It didn't look at the other factors that also contributed to this denaturing. This is why you'll often get people say, keep your peptides away from low pH products such as vitamin C's and exfoliating acids. But that's kind of oversimplifying it because in reality, what you need to cause this denaturing is that low pH coupled with a high temperature and an increase in pressure. You're using it on your face in an open air bag bathroom, you're not going to get that high temperature. You're not going to get that increased pressure. So even if you are getting the low pH environment, that's only one of the three components you need to denature these peptides. So I'd say if you've got vitamin C in your skincare routine already, you can absolutely use a peptide in that same routine. If you're still a little bit concerned, you can buffer between them. So apply your low pH products first, then use a skin pH neutral product such as like a hyaluronic acid serum or a calming toner, and then that'll reset like the skin's pH and you can then apply your peptide afterwards. I'd probably leave like two minutes after the application of your exfoliating acid or vitamin C before neutralizing it with that buffering step, you know, to make sure that it's fully absorbed and able to get to work. That's like a workaround, but honestly, I stop stressing about this. I use my peptides alongside my vitamin Cs and I just don't worry about it anymore because I think a lot of the times when people are saying this, they're only understanding half of what that scientific study was actually saying. You haven't got the temperature or the pressure that's going to actually denature these peptides. Now, mistake number three is overpaying for your peptides. 
peptide serum. Because peptides are super popular in skincare at the moment, brands have started to capitalize on that. And so they've decided to create products and just increase the price up, up, and up. As a result, you see people paying upwards of like 70, 80, 90 dollars for their peptide fix. You absolutely don't need to spend this much. I'd say the one exception to this are copper peptides, which do command a slightly higher price point. And I covered how they're different from standard peptides in a video, which I'll link up there. So if you take copper peptides out of the equation, all of the peptides should be drugstore and affordable. A couple of my favorites are these. This is the Ordinary Matrixol, which is a wonderful, wonderful peptide serum, and the Hylamide Sub-Q Skin. Now, this has been discontinued, but if you did want to get your hands on it, there are still a fair amount of stock in certain locations, and I've left links in the description box below, so check it out. But make sure you use the code that's also down there to get 50% off, because you know what? With the price of everything going up, why wouldn't we want to save some of our hard-earned coin? These are some of my holy grails and favorites. I think this commands like a £14 price point, which you can now get half price, and the Matrixel is like £6. So they're both drugstore, they're affordable, and they're really, really quality formulations. Don't overpay for your standard peptides. Invest that money in the rest of your skincare routine, or looking at copper peptides, which like I say, do come with a slightly higher price point. But for a standard peptide, keep it drugstore. Now, mistake number four is relying solely on your peptide and believing it's going to like cure all your skin concerns. It's not. It will definitely deliver you a whole suite of different benefits. If I look at my skin pre and then post using peptides, there's definitely been some game changing results. However, you need to use your peptides alongside other active ingredients that are really going to tackle any individual skin concerns that you might have. So for example, peptides are wonderful at evening out the complexion, bringing back a little vibrancy and luminosity. So I would definitely use it alongside like an alpha arbutin, a tranexamic acid or an azelaic acid in order to double down on the benefits that you're going to get. Peptides are amazing at boosting collagen and elastin production for a little anti-aging in our lives. But make sure that you also have a retinol in your evening skincare routine because that's going to double down on the benefits that you'll get in terms of anti-aging. It's all about seeing how these individual ingredients pair together to give you the results that you want. I think because people have been hyping peptides so, so much recently, people think all they need in their skincare routine is a peptide serum and literally they will be glowing to the gods with flawless skin in a second. In reality, you need to use them alongside other actives to really target down the results that you want to get from your routine. But because they pair so well with them, this should be relatively easy to do. Now, we're ending this video on mistake number five, which is relying on peptides in wash-off products. Um, this kind of links again to the hype that peptides are getting at the moment. Just about every product, every brand wants to stick peptide on the box, knowing that it's going to increase sales. One of my big pet hates in skincare is peptide-infused cleansers. You know, there might be some marginal benefits in terms of those peptides within a cleanser, but in reality, the benefits, the studies have shown those benefits are going to be given for leaving the peptide on the skin. So there's no harm in having a peptide infused cleanser, but that shouldn't be your only peptide step in your routine. I think you're going to get the best benefits from having it in a leave-on treatment, such as a serum or a moisturizer. Choose one that has multiple different peptides held within it, apply it, leave it on the skin so it can get to work to you all through the day. Some people will say that peptides in cleansers can help them be less stripping, less harsh, and actually can add some calming and soothing benefits to them. I'm not really sold on these benefits. There's no harm, but make sure that you invest in your hard-earned coin where it's going to deliver the most benefits, which is going to be in the serums and the moisturizers that you apply. So there you have it guys, five common mistakes when it comes to peptides. I genuinely believe there's a peptide serum out there for just about everyone. There's so many different benefits to be had from including it in your skincare routine. I'd hate to think that any of you are missing out because you feel that they're a little bit too complex to actually fit into an existing skincare routine. Hopefully I've dispelled some of those myths. You can absolutely layer them with vitamin C's. You don't need to overpay for your peptide. The drugstore is where it's at. And whilst cleansers can bring some benefit, Really, you want to be investing your peptides in those leave-on treatments for maximum bang for your buck and those ultimate results. Sound up in the comments section below and let me know any of your thoughts, feelings, and opinions that you might have. And wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, love your skin. Take care. Bye.